Hello everyone, my name is Paddy. I live in Bristol in the United Kingdom. I'm going to be doing how to record spoken word and vocals. If some of these all tense up like this, or if they're all really uncomfortable position, they're going to sound rubbish. So getting somebody in a good position, comfortable, confident, able to do a good performance is all very important. A lot of singers will sing better standing up. A lot of people speaking will speak better standing up. They'll be louder, their airways will be more clear. They'll be in a better posture. Everything will sound better. If you're too close to the microphone, you end up with all kind of mouth noises. If you're too far away from the microphone, you'll be picking up more of the background noise of the room, the echoes, the reverb of the room, of the space, and you'll be picking up more of the sounds that aren't the actual person speaking. Sound propagates through the air in a kind of forward and back motion. It's often represented as a waveform, but really the sound is vibrating the air forwards and backwards, and eventually it vibrates your eardrum, and your brain turns into something you can understand as sound. Bass sound is a low frequency that wobbles the air forwards and backwards at around 20 times a second. A really high frequency, which is the maximum any human could possibly hear, is 20,000, 20 kilohertz. Um, which is 20,000 wobbles every second. Pitch is more of a subjective term, whereas frequency is something you could measure and give an actual number to. Here I'm using a large diaphragm mic, which is brilliant for using in a studio and in a quiet space. It picks up everything. It doesn't skew the signal by making the low frequencies louder than the high frequencies or vice versa. This is a dynamic microphone, which is the sort of thing you might use on the stage. It picks up just the sounds in front of it and not so many of the sounds behind it. But as you can see, it's smaller than this microphone. So it's got a smaller diaphragm, which is the bit that converts the vibrations in the air into the electrical signals. So that diaphragm won't be able to pick up such low frequencies because it's smaller. Even if you've got your performer or your speaker in a wonderful position, they're speaking really well, you've got no background noise, if they're turned up too loud, you will get what's called clipping or distortion on the input. Here is a picture of some clipping. The input signal has gone beyond the highest amplitude that the recording device can deal with. The waveform, which should be a nice curves up and down, has been flattened off at the top. This is an example of too high an input level. The other thing you can do wrong is record at too low a level. This isn't such a problem because you can turn the volume up later in your digital audio workstation, but you'll still lose some of what's known as bandwidth. The easiest way to describe this is if I take a photograph and underexpose it, then I'm not using the full range of my spectrum of shades. I can stretch those out in the computer, but you can see here that this has introduced some noise and the picture doesn't look as good as if I'd made sure the original picture where it was well exposed and was using the full range an audio recording is obviously different from the noise on these pictures here, but it sounds pretty bad. Some microphones like this actually have batteries in, or have a separate power supply, but most of them have what's called phantom power, or 48 volt power, which is a clever way of sending the power they need along the actual wire itself. What I've done on my recording device is switch off the phantom power for now and I've plugged the female end of my balanced line XLR cable into the microphone and now I'm going to plug the male end into my audio recorder. I've set the input level down to zero so now I need to turn on the phantom power. On this it's a switch on the back 48 volts on. So that's on and now I can start adjusting the input level. That red light is a peak light, which shows I'm getting too high a level, so I'm going to turn that back a bit until that peak light stops lighting up when I speak. So that is getting more like it. It's usually better to have the input level slightly lower than you need in case somebody says, suddenly says something quite loud and ruins your entire recording. Now I've got my level set right, I can talk about plosives, the letters P and B, give out a lot of sound pressure, so you get a, a powerful wave, almost like a tidal wave, um, hitting the microphone, which in turn turns into a, a high amplitude wave. The difference in amplitude between the plosives and the rest is quite substantial. 
so you'll end up with most of your recording being quiet and the P's and B's being at a perfect level. All that sound energy goes this way, doesn't hit the microphone, but the microphone still picks up the sound. But you probably lose some of the audio quality because the microphone is not in the sweetest spot. This is actually from a kitchen shop. It's a um, chip pan splash guard. If I hold this in front of my mouth, when I say a P and a B, the P and the B hits the grid, and that takes a lot of the energy out of the wave, a bit like a breakwater in the sea. You can probably see that moving as I make those B and P sounds. And in moving this stocking, that's taking a lot of the energy out of the P's and B's. So it's making them effectively lower amplitude. So the difference between the P's and the B's and the sound level of the rest of what you're saying is a lot less.